Petrol versus electric, the BMW 3 Series 320i versus the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. But can an electric car really be a better choice than a petrol? To start this comparison, we're going to look at their interiors. And don't forget, if you want to buy a new car, go to whatcar.com to save yourself some money. The interior design of the Model 3 is as minimalist as a Scandinavian studio apartment, but the build quality is a bit more first year uni halls. Well, that, that's probably a bit too harsh, but still, it's decent rather than outstanding. So there aren't any cheap feeling plastics, and actually this wood effect is done quite nicely. This gloss surface looks and feels about as nice as you'd want from a car that's expensive, but the actual nuts and bolts of the thing, how well it's screwed together, just isn't as good as the 3 Series, which we'll look at in a bit more detail in a second. But one annoyance to point out in the Model 3 is adjusting the steering wheel and the door mirrors. Now, we've mentioned it in a previous video when we put this car up against the Jaguar I-Pace, and you can watch that by clicking on the link that has appeared somewhere. And basically, you've got to go through this touch screen here and then use the rotary dials on this, and it's just a bit fiddly and kind of unnecessary, isn't it? However, I can feel you all about to make this very point in the comments. It's probably only annoying the very first time you get in the car, because then you can assign where you want the steering wheel, how you want the door mirrors to a driver profile. So it means anytime you get in it after that, select your profile, it'll move it for you and off you go. So please don't leave any hateful comments now because I've addressed that point. The driving position that you get is good. You sit pretty high up and have a really good view of the road ahead. The only problem with it perhaps is this pillar here because they're quite thick at the front, more so than you get in the 3 Series. But the view over the shoulder is really good. There's a lot of glass back there, so the view out the back is pretty impressive. And also this panoramic sunroof comes as standard and it gives a really nice feeling of air, open space, and it's generally absolutely no problem at all with the practicality up front in the Model 3. There's loads of space and in fact loads of storage options too, so that's all very impressive. Now everything is controlled through this massive 15 inch touchscreen at the front of the car. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Even if you want to open the glove box, you have to use the screen there. Luckily, it's a very good screen. It's a very good infotainment system. So it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but the interface is so good that actually you're unlikely to miss having that smartphone integration that you get in the 3 Series. So it's really crisp, clear, brilliant graphics, amazingly responsive, and generally pretty simple to use. Like most infotainment systems, you're better off sitting down, getting used to it first. However, it's so good when you're parked up. When you wanna use it on the move and drive off, it's a touchscreen and a touchscreen only. So ultimately, it's more distracting than systems that have physical controls to help use the screen. So we'll look at the 3 Series and how good that infotainment system is in a second. Another thing that the Model 3 gets as standard is something called Sentry Mode, and that is essentially a built-in dash cam. So when you park up, lock the car, go and leave it, it uses all the cameras around the car to record. So if someone drives into you, if someone opens their door on you in an airport car park, if someone tries to break in the car, then the cameras will be recording and they put it on a USB stick so you have evidence if you need it. So that's a really handy feature, very impressive that it's offered with the Model 3. And surely other manufacturers could be offering a similar thing because more and more cars are gonna have these cameras around it for adaptive cruise control and semi-autonomous driving features. So well done Tesla for offering that. The interior generally then, very impressive, some annoyances, but how does it compare to the 3 Series? Now, the reason BMW's infotainment system is better is because it's made up of a 12.3 inch super sharp touchscreen here and it gets a rotary dial down there. So you can control it through the screen and it's very responsive. You've also got some voice command functions as well, but crucially, when you're driving, you can just swivel this rotary dial, use the shortcut buttons around here, and it's all very simple. And it's packed with features, really crisp and clear, a very impressive system, not just in this class, but any class. And we've come to expect that from BMW. Plus, the good news is that they have finally come to their senses and they're not making people pay for Apple CarPlay after the first year. And Android Auto is coming to iDrive in the future. Well done, BMW.
Everything around the infotainment system is laid out pretty logically. The only complaint would be that these buttons down here for the aircon are a bit small and fiddly, but still, very good, very impressive generally, and the build quality throughout this interior is incredible. So everything's amazingly solid, the materials are very, very nice, and it's generally better finished than the Model 3. You have also a fantastic driving position, so you get a really traditional saloon driving position, which is nice and low, legs outstretched, really good visibility, as we said, thinner pillars than in the Model 3, and still a very good view out of the back too. So that's all really impressive, and the seats are a bit more supportive too, so you have more of a hugging sensation when you're going through quick corners, plus you have this movable, extendable seat squab as well to support your thighs if you're particularly long-legged, although it's a bit annoying when it is out if you're having a sandwich on your commute then all the crumbs fall in there and that just gets a bit annoying to clean. But that's a bit of a first world problem. I also really like this Oyster interior, which is a no cost option on M Sport. Would definitely recommend that. And generally, just a very, very, very impressive interior. You won't have a problem getting comfortable in the front of either car, even if you're well over six feet tall. In the back, they're pretty similar as well. Although in the Model 3, you have less of a feeling of claustrophobia because of this nice panoramic sunroof that comes as standard. You also have bigger windows in the back and it just generally feels a bit more open. The floor, though, is higher than it is in the 3 Series. That's because the battery is underneath it. So it's not really too much of a problem, but it just means that your knees are going to have a slightly more acute angle when you're sat there because the floor is a bit higher. Otherwise, pretty impressive back here, nice and comfortable well-cushioned seats. So how does it compare to the 3 Series? Two adults in the back of the 3 Series will be fine. There is a really good amount of knee and leg room, just like there is in the Model 3. Headroom is impressive as well. It doesn't have that feeling of spaciousness and openness because of the sunroof that the Model 3 gets, but still, it's very good back here. However, if you're carrying three adults in the back, then the person in the middle is not going to be very comfortable because you can see it has a massive central hump here and the center console comes quite far back into the rear too. So it means if you're sat in the middle, there's no place to put your feet. So you've got to put it either side and this middle seat as well isn't quite so softly cushioned like the outer two seats. So really, if you're carrying lots of adults in the car regularly, the Model 3 will be the better bet and it generally is more practical in the back. Now, both these cars have saloon rather than hatchback boots, which means that when they open, the rear screen does not move with the boot. So it gives them a naturally smaller aperture than more practical hatchbacks. And you can see that while you get an electrically operated tailgate on the 3 Series, no such luxuries are available on the Model 3. However, it is a very light boot lid and it's pretty good at opening itself anyway, so that's not really much of a problem. Now, when you compare the load bays, you can see the Model 3 is significantly bigger. Plus, it has a really useful amount of underfloor storage, so you can just chuck all the charging cables in there and not worry about it. You can even have some extra space under the nose of the car as well, which is very useful indeed. And it means, in total, you can fit 10 carry-on size suitcases into the back of a Model 3, whereas in a 3 Series, you can fit seven. So, no doubting, the Model 3 is a more practical car. Split-folding rear seats come as standard on the Model 3. However, the 3 Series goes one step further with 40-20-40 split-folding seats. These offer greater flexibility than the 60-40 split in the Model 3 and are great for hauling skis or snowboards or long planks of wood or whatever else you want to carry. But how expensive are these cars and what are they really like to run? These are the key things to know about buying and owning a Model 3 and a BMW 3 Series. Well, here's the thing. If you work in the UK and you have a proper job, unlike me, then you might be able to choose to run a company car. If you do, you pay a tax based on the value of the car and its CO2 emissions. This is called benefit and kind tax. From April in the UK, some changes to the tax ban systems means that electric cars, which emit zero grams per kilometre, will pay a tax of 0% in the first year, 1% the year after that, and 2% the year after that. This 320i, however, emits 159 grams per kilometre of CO2, which means the tax that you'll pay is 34% in the first year, 35% after that, and 36% the year after that. 
All of this means that the Model 3, and indeed any electric car, is so much cheaper to run as a company car than a petrol or a diesel. So the BMW will cost you more than £10,000 extra to run over three years, whereas the Model 3 won't even cost you £1,000. Plus, driving the Model 3 will add just £540 to your electricity bill every 12,000 miles, and it will be even less if you're signed up to an Economy 7 tariff and plug it into charge overnight. Drive the same number of miles in the 3 Series and it will cost you more than £2,000 in petrol. The Model 3 is also the much cheaper option for private buyers paying cash in the long run, and that's because it holds onto its value much better. However, it's not all in the Model 3's favour, because if you're buying on a PCP finance deal, then the 320i does work out as being cheaper. You do have to pay a small fee to use Tesla's brilliant supercharger network, but at least you have access to it, meaning you can get a relatively quick charge from any of the 300 sites across the UK. You can also plug it into a regular public CCS charger or use a Type 2 connector at home. The 320i uses something called a petrol station to charge itself, but it has a real world range of around 450 miles, and of course, refueling it is the work of a couple of minutes. You'll need to stop to recharge quite a lot more in the Model 3. The official figures suggest a range of up to 254 miles, but you'll need to drive like a vicar to get close to that. It managed 181 miles in our real range test, a decent distance, and farther than you'll get in, say, a BMW i3, but still potentially quite frustrating. The Model 3 comes with autopilot as standard, which includes adaptive cruise control and the best self-steering system that we've tried on any car. And it's great on the motorway. Adaptive cruise control and a panoramic sunroof cost extra in the 3 Series. Like the Model 3, you get heated front seats, but the 3 Series uses real leather, whereas the Model 3 has faux leather. Maybe that's better for vegetarians. All things considered, the Model 3 is better equipped. Both cars excel when it comes to safety. They both scored excellent marks in the Euro NCAP crash test. The Model 3 scored higher for its safety assistance, which covers active safety features like AEB and lane keep assist, but the 3 Series scored marginally better in the other areas. Bottom line is, they are both very safe. So what are these cars like to drive? Well, the Standard Range Plus is the least powerful Model 3 that you can buy, but it will still comfortably see off the 3 Series and plenty of other warm hatches in a drag race. And also in our testing, it required a shorter distance to perform an emergency stop from 30 miles an hour and 70 miles an hour, which is important and impressive considering it's pretty heavy weight. Now, it is a heavy car, it's heavier than the 3 Series, and you can feel that. In all-wheel drive performance, guys, the Model 3 is more capable through the bends, feels more stable, and obviously it's more powerful, but even then, it's not as good as the best 3 Series. Both these cars are driven by their rear wheels, but it's the 3 Series that feels more controlled and capable. It's still nice to drive, and you have all those electric car benefits of really quiet performance around town, so it's very tranquil in here, no engine noise, very peaceful, and it builds pace incredibly quickly. It's really quite addictive in the way that it does it. And it's also the comfiest motorway cruiser as well. But if you really love driving, then the 3 Series is easily the better car. It handles in a much more controlled manner, and the steering is so much better. It's, it's more naturally weighted, and it just generally feels more alert. So quick changes of direction are no problem for this car. It shifts its weight so well, and the nose responds with an immediacy that the Model 3 just doesn't. It's still a really good car to drive, that Tesla, but the 3 Series is the pinnacle in this class. We would, though, recommend going for the rather pricey M Sport Adaptive Suspension Pack because, with it, the car rides in a very controlled way. There are quite a lot of movements to the body as it passes over the road, but it's all really controlled and there's no kind of abruptness if it does pass over a pothole or any kind of sharp-edged expansion joints or anything like that. And when you do push on through those corners, there's hardly any body lean at all in the car. It stays incredibly flat, whereas in the Model 3, you're noticeably flung around a little bit more. And also these seats, remember, they hug you in better in the 3 Series too. So it just generally creates this environment that really makes you want to push the car and have fun while you do it. 
And this four-cylinder petrol engine is relatively characterful, feels quite punchy. The gearbox can be a little slow, but generally, if you leave it in auto and let it do its thing, it's pretty relaxing. And although the Model 3 might be very quiet around town, the 3 Series is actually the quieter cruiser at 70 miles an hour. Now, you could argue that in this test, we're comparing apples with oranges, because for some people, especially if you don't have a driveway, owning an electric car just isn't a viable option. But if you have a home charger installed, then the Tesla is a massively compelling option. The Standard Range Plus isn't the best version of the Model 3, though, because the pricier versions have better ranges and they drive better. But across the board, they're all just as practical as one another and incredibly safe. Plus, this model is actually better equipped as standard than the 3 Series. But if money were no object, then the 3 Series is fundamentally the better car here. It has more sophisticated handling, a classier interior, and an infotainment system that's just easier, better, and safer to use, especially on the move. However, whether you're a company car driver or a private buyer, it requires an enormous extra outlay to have over the Model 3. So the differences aren't enough to mean that it's the better choice in this test. So that means that the Model 3 Standard Range Plus is our winner. And if you want even more information on either of these cars, go to whatcar.com where you can find our extended written reviews. If you're in the market for a new car, on our website, you can browse through our list of deals to find the very best deal around. And remember, it could save you thousands off your next new car. Plus, if you've enjoyed this video, it would be great if you gave it a like. If you've got any questions or opinions about the car, then please leave a comment below. Which one would you end up buying? And make sure that you're subscribed to our channel because we have loads of videos just like this coming out every week.